Okay guys, one more video for today and this is about Chinese power. Now, um, you know, a lot of people have talked about the New World Order, how much power do they have? And we know back in a hundred years ago, the Rothschilds via the Sassoon family had control of China. We know the Opium Wars were started in, with, by Britain and, and they had control of China. But is China a freak? country today, you know, in terms of a free thinking country, in terms of their leadership, you know, do they think for themselves? Are they controlled still by the the kind of Rothschild, uh, America, empire, America, British Empire kind of thing? Are they under the sway of the New World Order? Or are them and Russia forging their own New World Order and looking to crash the disgusting Great Reset of Klaus Schwab and his elites? So there was a very interesting interview by someone called, um, I can't remember his first name, Nyquist. He is a uh, analyst, a German, sorry, he's obviously Swedish by the name, but he's an American analyst in military affairs. He says there are no lockdowns happening in Shanghai and around China. The lockdowns are a cover for moving elect uh, military equipment and they do not want the general public seeing what's happening, so they want them locked in their homes, right? He says military equipment is being moved all around and it's heavy military equipment. But he says it won't be used to invade Taiwan because it's not suitable. Taiwan is mainly a mountainous country with very urban areas and swampy areas. And this particular type of military equipment is far too numerous than it's needed and it's not suitable for Taiwan. So he wonders what this equipment is being moved, why it's going to be used, blah, blah, blah. He suggested it's for some sort of military operation around the Solomon Islands to take, to block Australia off from America and to some way seize control. I believe China already have a very strong foothold in um, the Australian media, the military and mining. Uh, it might be very easy for them to cement control. I believe a lot what Australia does is already dictated by China, hence the heavy lockdowns. So it'd be interesting to see what the military stuff, if this guy's right, okay, he might be wrong, he might be a a disinformation agent. But if he's correct, what does that mean going forward for that sort of Solomon Islands area and cutting off Australia from America? He went to say maybe they're thinking of invading America. I don't think so. The Chinese art of war has always been Ill infiltration rather than, you know, going in militarily. And if you think about it, America, Biden, you know, don't interrupt your enemy while they're destroying themselves. So some people are saying, no, 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 no. It's all an act. The um, elite of the kind of um, Israel stroke British Empire stroke American industrial complex empire aristocracy Illuminati Council of 300. They've got total control of China and they're just using China to roll out their system of control to the rest of the world. So they're really in power, right? Um, the Chinese are just going along with it like stooges. Why would the Chinese be going along with it like stooges? That seems to me like a kind of racist and, and almost a derogatory way of looking at the Chinese. They're a strong culture. They're an ancient culture. They are very savvy. They actually, although they're communists, they run business better than a lot of Americas and Britain are running business. I think they're playing along. And when the time comes, they're just going to stab the um, others in the back and say, no, we, we're not actually interested in your reset. Us, Russia, and the rest of the world are having our own reset. We want nothing to do with you, and we'll crush you. And I, I think that's reflected in, they can see what's going on in America. They see the degeneracy, the breakdown in family, the breakdown in culture. They see what this this insidious Marxist Bolshevik force has done to decay and destroy American and European society. They don't want that. They don't want all this garbage of 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 those ridiculous trans and all this nonsense and yes there's an argument for genuine but we all know that the whole trans agenda has become more nefarious than good um you know they they don't they don't want that agenda so why would they be on board with it and people say oh well you know they control because of the financial system sorry china aren't controlled because the rothschilds banking cabal blah 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 have loads of useless fiat currency backed by nothing they have real assets they've done their debt trap diplomacy by buying infrastructure around the world through funding it and then letting the country go bankrupt and then taking the infrastructure. They've done this thing of cap Mao said, capture the country to capture the cities. They've captured all the poor countries around the world, you know, in Africa and Sri Lanka and whatever. They build the infrastructure and they take it over when the country as collateral, when the country goes into debt. Therefore, they have fantastic infrastructure around the world, including in um, they're getting a foothold in Ireland and Iceland, as I mentioned before, in the seaports. They've got their Belt and Road Initiative, which is up and running. They've got mining interests. They've got a very, very productive workforce. They've got manufacturing. They control 
all the the kind of um, key um, components and, and ingredients for the, both the pharmaceuticals and all the other car industrial industries. They have all the cards in their hand, plus all the resources that Russia have in the rare earth minerals. They don't need the Rothschilds and their central banking scam. So I think China really do have the power. I do think there's a break. At one time, they might have been working together, but I think there's a separation where Russia and China say, hell, we don't want to know this. Um, you've used us and now we've gained a lot of power. We don't need you. And they don't. They really don't. So um, I believe there are Russian troops training at the moment in Nicaragua and the West aren't making a big deal of that at all, which is rather odd. You'd think they'd be having a hoo-ha about it. And um, also, you know, a lot of the Mexican cartels are controlled by China. I think China have a big foothold in Mexico and South America and also maybe in Canada. Remember, during COVID, there were Chinese troops doing exercises in Canada. I think the, the Canadian, although Justin Trudeau swears his allegiance to the Queen, not to the Canadian people. He swears his allegiance to the Queen and offers to carry out all the instructions of the Privy Council. So Canada was once totally under the sway of the Council of 300, you know, the, the Royal Institute of Economic Affairs, but not so much anymore. I think they're coming along with Australia, more and more control of uh, China. And I think China are getting more embedded in Mexico. And um, yeah, so just having a little bit there, Honduras, Kaliningrad, I remembered all of that. And uh just there was another, yeah, I know that Majid Nawaz has been doing the rounds and he's talking a lot about, you know, the digital currency and making a big deal. I think that's a red herring. I think when people like Majid and maybe Steve Martin and others are saying that digital currency and this digital credit score, no, they will take, it's going to take far lot, too long for them to roll that out. Everything's going to come crashing down before that. I heard another interview with the guy, um, Get his name, Simon Dolan, and he said it'll take them 10 to 20 years to roll out this digital currency. It's not the immediate threat, and that's why Mudget and these ones are talking about it. Remember, when the government runs any um, high technology front end, back end development, techie coding thing, it makes a hash of it, like the NHS database, which they tried to do years ago under Blair, and it had to be scrapped because. It wasn't done properly. It just didn't work. The government is not capable of rolling out the cryptocurrencies. They need a lot of help from industry, etc. And then it'll probably even go wrong because the government is involved in it. So that's a red herring. And I don't think we need to worry about it particularly. Right. It, you know, it's not, I'm not saying it's not a thing, but it's definitely not the biggest thing. And as I say, I think Mudget is a disinformation. Sorry, Mudget, if you listen, if you're not listening, to be honest, he's not listening but I think he's he's hit the ground running on the whole conspiracy thing and going from hero to from zero to every conspiracy known to man. It, it just is ringing alarming alarm bells, and you know he's he's just gone. David Icke says when something comes out of nowhere and suddenly it's everywhere, you know you've got a problem. And I think he's come from nowhere suddenly he's everywhere. I say the same thing with Russell Brand. I mean I'm just suspicious about these people, and no one should take that personally. Each to his own. I know a lot of people find he makes sense and he wakes up their relatives and and that's helpful. And certain things he's saying is of course very helpful but I think a bit too little too late in terms of, of, of some of the other agendas isn't that so one more point guys and Max Eigen mentioned this but it's something I've often thought before is you know we told about the dangers of nuclear power and how or not nuclear weapons and how that you know the half lives so thousands of years and how that if there's nuclear war everything will be destroyed and and it'll take thousands of years to come back and these bombs are devastating well how come there are people living in Hiroshima and Nagasaki I know one was a plutonium, another one was a uranium, but they were both nuclear bombs. And how come these are thriving centers of commerce and, you know, building and there's no problem. Are we being lied to about the threat of nuclear bombs? I'd be interested in um, your thoughts. So maybe they will use nukes simply because they know they destroy, but they can very quickly rebuild like they did in Japan. So they could be very, very useful to the elites tactically for destroying certain cities that they want to decimate and populations they might want to decimate. And then they want to rebuild. So, yeah, that could be. And uh, look at, uh, I was surprised to see how close Chernobyl is to uh, Kiev, right? And yet we know the nature around there is absolutely flourishing. There's documentaries on it on YouTube. Why, if radiation is so dangerous as we are told? I'm not saying, I do. I kind of, I'm on the camp that thinks nuclear power is dangerous and it causes cancer. I'm in that camp and always have been, but I'm beginning to ask these other questions about it as well. So I hope you've enjoyed those. Lots of food for thought, guys.